The Lord be with you. Welcome to our service in love and honor of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's good to be in the house of the, of the Lord. Amen? Amen? Amen. A few announcements. There will be, I know this sounds odd, a short finance meeting. One issue, short finance meeting after worship service. I know, it's quick. At 12 o'clock in the prayer garden. Sue Whetstone, the wife of Arthur Whetstone, has passed away, and we will keep Arthur and his family in our prayers. Next week, May the 3rd, make sure during our worship service you have some bread handy and your beverage of choice as we celebrate the sacrament and join with us this Wednesday night at 7 o'clock as we will have Jesse live on the piano. We, we look forward to it. Let us continue to seek our Father. Oh 
Thank you. Join with me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pause for a moment and let us make a prayer of confession to Almighty God. Let us pray. Almighty God, hears our prayers and forgives our sins. In the name of the Christ, we pray. Amen. We have mailed out to our church members and those on our mailing list our prayer list. We'd like to add Arthur at the loss of his wife. And let us pause for a second of silent prayer for these and any other affections of our hearts. Let us pray. Most Holy One, bend low and lend us thy ear. With all that is going on in this world with this virus, so many people are feeling fractured. person called me this week and said they feel like they are lost and alone in the midst of this isolation. And I thank them for reaching out. Help us remember 
that our neighbors need our contact. We can stand in the yard and talk to them. We can talk to them on the phone. This is hard on all of us, Father. We ask for your presence to comfort us. Your presence to hold us. Your presence that allows us to feel you so very close. And we pause and we pray for those persons and families and caregivers that are represented by our prayer list. That you would bring comfort. We offer this prayer in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Thank you. I'd like to speak to our children. First of all, don't forget God loves you. I love you. And our church loves you. I want to thank you for all the messages that you had your parents send this past week about what you were thankful for that was read. That was wonderful. I want you this week to look for something that is soft that you can be thankful for. And when you say your prayers, you thank God for that one thing that is soft and let me know what it is blessings to you let us pray father be with our children and hold them close and help us as your church share the stories of the faith with them in Christ's name amen our scripture text this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, the 24th chapter, starting with verse 13. That same day, Sunday, two of Jesus' followers were walking to the village of Emmaus, seven miles from the holy city. And as they walked along, they were talking about Jesus' death when suddenly Jesus himself came along and joined them and began walking beside them. They did not recognize him, for God had kept it from them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Feelings of doubt, hopelessness, and heartache are common, are common feelings to all of us. Any of these emotions can fill our lives with anxiety and fear. And when we feel these we can wonder when will life when will life ever get back to normal and that's very true in this day and time when we feel doubt and hopelessness and heartache we can forget there was ever a thing called hope And all we've learned about God's amazing grace is nowhere to be found. If we ever knew how to call upon God, it's only a memory of a kinder, happier time in our lives. Sometimes when we need God the most, we turn away. And that's exactly where we find Cleopas and his friend. They were followers of Jesus and believed in the new life that Jesus talked about. Their hearts were filled with joy and hope as they looked forward to hearing more of his words and seeing more of his actions, more of his miracles. But all of that was gone when he died. His fellowship fed the mind and body and soul, and it filled them with joy. 
everything they gave up to follow him was nothing compared to what they got from him. And they thought it would go on forever. But that was then. And this is now. And their hopes and their dreams were as dead as Jesus. The events of the last few days, an arrest, a trial, an execution, and a grave simply beat every shred of hope out of them. They felt there was nothing they could do except for leave and go back home. Perhaps pick up the pieces of their former lives and begin again. To turn their backs on all that seemed so expected, so hopeful. And they walked seven miles to Emmaus. So they headed out, the two of them. And they talked as they went, and they went over and over and over the same ground. As if repeating it again would change the outcome somehow. We do the same thing. When we lose something, we revisit the spot thinking that if we go there often enough, whatever has been lost will be found. As Cleopas and his friend are doing this, a stranger meets them and joins them on the road. It's Jesus. And their hearts are so full of defeat and they are so devoid of faith that they cannot even recognize him. And what's more, when he asks them what they're talking about, they cannot even begin to, to believe this man doesn't know what has happened. Where has he been? And so they begin telling the story all over again. They tell him about the empty tomb. How some women have gone there and, and angels have proclaimed that Jesus is not dead but alive. But still, they said, no one has seen him. Maybe Mary and the others simply heard what they wanted to hear. And when they finished retelling the story, the stranger, Jesus, taught them. And he said, weren't you listening? When he told you how all this must come to pass? Don't you know how the prophets foretold exactly what was going to happen? That the Messiah must suffer before he enters his glory. And Jesus recites scripture for them, going all the way back to the teachings of Moses. And they are so drawn into the stranger's words that when they finally reach 
the turnoff to go home. They invite the stranger to come with them. They don't want him to leave. They want to hear more. And the stranger agrees and sits down to eat. And the oddest thing happens. The stranger, Jesus, at their table, becomes the host. He takes the bread and he blesses it and he breaks it and he gives it to them. And in this simple act, their eyes are opened. They know who he is and he is gone. For Cleopas and his friend, their hopelessness was gone. Their faith was renewed. They were so excited and so happy that they ran all the way back to the holy city to share the good news. He lives. If Jesus was sad or upset with these two men, and all of those who had abandoned him in the end, who in the midst of their despair and grief chose their own roads to Emmaus rather than sticking it out with him. We never hear a word. All we have are Jesus' actions no matter how bad things get. No matter where we go to hide or what roads our feet take, when the world gets too much for us, even if we lose faith along the way, he will come and abide with us like he did Mary and Peter and Thomas, Cleopas and his friend. And he will not ask us for explanations. And we won't have to justify ourselves. He will simply meet us as we walk along our own road to Emmaus because our God is a faithful God. The gift of Emmaus for all of us is there's hope. There's life. There's renewal of faith. It may be a long and winding road. But wherever it takes us, he is there. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
we thank you for joining us in worship. And as the preacher always says, go in peace this day. Go in peace. To love and to serve the Lord. And then in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.